<coughs> I don't my name. Hey, you didn't want to make sure you tell the audience this is for pajama day. You well, just, like, we, could. we could. We could. This, this is how we. This is how we. Dress. Or this is just kind of how we dress. How we dress every day. You'll never know. All right. Yeah. Things happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Shannon Dunn, I'm a teacher here at Esquimalt High School, and I'm from North Saanich. My name is Aiden Mickelson, I'm 17 years old, I'm a student at Esquimalt High School, and I'm from Victoria, BC. Je m'appelle Ella, je viens de France, j'ai 16 ans, et je suis à Esquimalt High School. My name is John Harris, I'm uh, from Sinanamo First Nation. I'm uh, Coast Salish and Dene on my father's side, and German, Irish, Canadian on my mother's side. Um, I am an Aboriginal Educational Assistant at Esquimalt High School. My name is Conchita Sparvey, I'm 17 years old. I go to Esquimalt High School and I'm from Victoria, British Columbia. I'm Ashley McNeil Glosson. I'm 16. I live in Victoria, BC and I go to Esquimalt High School. I'm Wilfredo Harris. I'm 16 years old. I go to Esquimalt High School and I'm from Victoria, BC. É, meu nome é Regina, eu tenho 17 anos, eu vou para a Scrimont High School e eu sou do Brasil. My name is Aaron Flanario, I'm 16 years old, I uh, attend at Scrimont High School. My name is Damian Modesto Joe, I'm from Cowichan Tribes and I'm currently going to school at Scrimont High School. I'm Simon Sam, I'm Songhees and I'm from Victoria, BC and I go to Scrimont High School. Hello, my name is Elmer George. The name Jen is my given name from Songhees, one of the elders of Songhees Reserve. Uh, the the name Jen, the name the name Jen came from Bakuchin, Cole Bay, my grand uncle, given to me by my aunt and my late sister. So. Educators now recognize that students are embracing technology, whether we like it or not, and it's a way to engage a lot of learners, help them to um, use their interests, because a lot of students, they're on their phones, they're playing video games, they're, in a lot of cases, they know the technology better than their teachers do. Back home it's different to me because I'm, I'm close to everyone, I'm close to my parents, I'm close to my friends, so if I want to talk to them I have another resource that's not my phone. Here I can't be without my phone because I want to talk, to, If I ha I'm always worried that something's going to happen back home and I'm not going to have my phone and I'm not going to be able to talk to my friends or my parents and I want to be there for them as well as I want them to be there for me. So. It has a huge impact. I don't know if we, if they took away our phones like today, we wouldn't be able to like live without it. We are already addicted to it. I think if we were if we were kind of raised on it, I don't really know if we would really know of any difference. So I think if we were raised on it, we wouldn't. There wouldn't have been a difference. If we if it just got taken away from us one day, it would be it'd be hard. It'd be hard. Yeah, that's for sure. I don't know if people have the same like communication skills as they used to. I think it's crazy how different is like France and here. I think guys in Canada are really adapted to video games. My life would be 
extremely different because I spend a lot of my free time uh, playing video games and just lazing around at my house because I spend a lot of my time well when I'm not playing video games and on the phone and just lazing around I'm playing basketball I'm out with my friends um, going bike riding and going everywhere like I travel over. I know Victoria BC like back of my head because I've been around everywhere and I also think that we don't use our cell phone for the same thing. So yeah, it's really different. But I think it will be... I like being without my phone, but I know that I, I need my phone. <laughs> when I was younger, I didn't have an iPod or iPhone or all that. I just... Me and my family and my brothers had like Nintendo, Nintendo 64. And if we didn't want to play that, we would go outside, play I didn't take a day. Like most of the time we were outside, especially my age, because uh, my mom and my dad had a job and they were busy. So I was babysit by my grandma. And most of the time I was outside because the only thing they had at their place was, was the beach. So I would go down there and play go swimming, especially in the summer. Oh, it was fun in the summer. If we didn't have technology or anything like that, it'd be definitely a lot different, but I feel like everyone would be more social to each other and accepting. Today we got fast cars, we got cell phones, we just, we don't miss it anymore like they used to. We don't know our families, you know, that's part of our culture, we have to know who our people are, you know, and we, but we're losing it a lot because of the cell phones, TVs, and uh, computers, and all these things, you know, taking us away from our life, our culture. Life without technology would be a great life because almost everybody has a cell phone or a laptop or something like that, but what people don't see is the beauty of this world and they just need to like learn to go out more and explore new places to them and they're gonna see the beauty of this world. Our old people used to go and visit today we phone we just phone our old people I remember our old people some of them from Duncan used to come down on the train come up to our house, stay for a whole week visiting my mother or my father, related, then they'd go back home. I really like the idea of having a final product that we could all watch together and celebrate and um, regardless of if students were in front of the camera, they would have a part in the production of it. Just learning, I think, learning how to edit and how to piece together a little one minute film. Yeah, learning all like the different like setups and stuff, like the lights and like, the microphone, what it picks up and stuff, I guess. Uh, actually, I was really happy to come to class when I know you were here, because every time, like I liked the work we did, because I could find myself and that, that was what you asked us to do. And I could remember my past and see what happened, and so that was really nice. For me, I really enjoyed looking back on my life and seeing how I came, like, to be here in this time, because I've come through a lot of struggle. And uh, learning about camera equipment's always been something I've always wanted to do. So it's just a two in one. Honestly, a highlight I liked was going through my past and like reviewing some of the big things I've done in my life. I enjoyed the uh, editing we've done on the little slideshow. One of the highlights to me was when we did that big poster and you told us to like list our favorite things and it was really fun just to remember everything and all the things we've been through. It was amazing. I really, really liked it. What I liked about this was how you taught us to set up the lights and cameras and how to use them. I've always been interested in um, providing opportunity for students with different learning styles to be able to figure out what works for them and 
to be able to have a part. So we can see in a production, like a documentary, there's opportunity for people to figure out what works for them. And so it's collaborative, it's interactive, it works with Aboriginal um, ways of learning. So it's holistic, reflective, and in so many different ways it engages students. Self-esteem to me is uh, a sense of um, well-being, confidence, um, basically how one feels about themselves. And so my family, my friends, but even students, I feel extremely, extremely thankful that I'm working in a, uh, a career that I love. I'm learning all the time. I, uh, I'm very thankful. Uh, I feel it's a privilege to work with students at this age um, and see them progressing toward adulthood. Uh, Self-esteem to me is uh, the way you see yourself, the lens that you see the world. Self-esteem means to me just feeling good about yourself, feeling proud of what you do and what you've accomplished in your life. Self-esteem to me is when you succeed at something and feel proud about it because you worked hard and tried your best at it. And even if you don't succeed, you should be proud even if you do fail because you're giving it your all and you should keep doing it. For me, self-esteem is to be confident in yourself. Self-esteem means to me uh, uh, the way you feel, your emotions. It's all of your accumulated uh, knowledge and experience and wisdom um, growing up. Self-esteem to me is feeling happy about yourself and being confident about everything that you're doing. Self-esteem to me, I guess, is like I don't know how like I perform. The skills and training that you were instilled with as a child and a student and a grandchild. Self-esteem to me is like a hidden power that almost everybody has inside them. And the people who contribute to the self-esteem is like your friends, your family, and your teachers and coaches and all that. Um, self-esteem is just kind of like the confidence that you, you hold yourself to and, and yeah, just kind of how you hold yourself? Uh, for me, I mean, I guess it starts with, um, with my parents. Um, big supporters, uh, always uh, very heavily involved in our lives, um, always uh, contributing to our, our extracurricular sports, um, taking us, you know, halfway across the country to soccer and baseball tournaments. Um, and I think people who, who contributed to that is a lot of the staff here at Scarborough High School have definitely contributed. Uh, a lot of my family members <coughs> have contributed, and a lot of friends have contributed. For me, my parents and my friends and also my teachers have a huge part in that because every time that I feel like I'm doing something good or like doing, even doing good things to a, another person, it makes me feel really good about myself. I have to say a lot of people have contributed to it. Family members, friends, teachers, other students. Um, being part of a team, I think, is really important for young people. Um, being active, obviously, as well, but, uh, but just having uh, that sense of camaraderie, of team building, of togetherness, uh, working towards a goal, I think, is, is a big self-esteem builder. Sports have like a very big, they play a very, very big part in, in kind of how I am during the day. Like if I if I have a very good game, then like for the rest of the week I'm pretty happy and, and bubbly. But if if I don't have a good game or if I yeah, if I don't play very well then it's very it's very very big part in how in how I kinda hold myself. Um, and then my grandparents obviously uh, have have been a big part of my lives. I was fortunate to have my great grandparents. Uh, three of them in my life for about 20 years and so um, and they were just uh I think self-esteem is a big part of my life because uh, there's been a lot of struggles I've went through and I've uh, always kind of thought down on myself for some of those things thinking that they're my fault or something 
sports for me, um, well, I used to be a scrapper, I'm not gonna, <laughs> gonna lie, but like, and then I found rugby and stuff, so I've like drifted away from like the bad paths and stuff, so yeah, like, like Aiden said for me too, like if I have like a good game and I win or something, I'll be, I'll be happy for the week, but if not, then I'll be all like, whatever, like all pouty and stuff, grumpy, so. Mostly family and teachers. Like to um, so I was very fortunate to have um, three of my great grandparents in my life for about 20 years um, and I learned a lot of amazing uh, things from them as well as being enriched by uh, the experience of, of their company and, and the teachings that they were able to share with me um, and obviously a big part in my self-esteem building over my first 20 years. Tell the truth, I uh, I was sent to boarding school. I lost a lot of um, lot of my time with the people. Low self esteem can impact almost a lot of people because most of the time people have fears that they're going to be judged on, like how weak they are, or how slow they are, or their weight. There was a time that I was like really like unfocused and all this stuff back home because of some things. And then my mom would come and talk to me. I mean, you want, you're want you already like suffering in your life. Do you want to do bad at school as well? That's not going to help you. So like everything in life, it's like it has a pattern. So like when you're doing bad at one thing, you have a tendency to do bad in another thing because you have like motivation to do better. So I think that happens a lot. Like for example, when you do like bad in a test of something, you don't want to go to that class anymore because you don't feel like inspired to go there. Probably wouldn't work as hard as they could. They probably feel like down. Like they couldn't do as good of a job as everyone else when they can. And that can impact a community as well. Because it's like a disease. If one has low self-esteem, then everyone else will get it as well. I think, you know, meaningful um, lifelong learning is, is based on relationships of trust. And I think um, that trust was broken as a result of uh, the residential schools. Um, and so you see a lot of parents and grandparents with a lot of distrust for, um, for the schooling system in general. And so um, there's a reluctance there to send their kids to school and send their grandkids to school or to partake in their education because of that broken trust. When I came out, I out of school. I ran away from school at 15, boarding school, and uh, I, uh, I lived in Washington for quite a while before I came home. Low self-esteem can affect someone in multiple different ways. Um, you could just be too focused on what is causing your low self-esteem to be involved with things that going on around you. Uh, for example, school, work, um, just keeping keeping yourself in good like shape. It, it, it affects a lot of people. If, if Even if one person is affected with low self-esteem, it can affect a lot of people, I feel. Low self-esteem can affect a lot of things, especially uh, courage, I guess. Because when you get kicked down and you feel sad, depressed, especially when you have anxiety, uh, you feel like you can't do it again and you don't want to do it again because you, you're afraid you're going to fail again. But it's okay to fail because you can't succeed without failing a few times. I have like a lot of friends that like put their self down and stuff because they like, 
games, for example, like, oh, I didn't catch the ball or, like, I could have scored or, like, they dropped the ball or something. Just, like, don't worry about it. Just, like, I don't know. Just Like, I usually tell them just don't let it happen again and just make something better. Like, do something, like, mm -hmm. that will help and, like, change the game instead of just, like, think of it and then you keep doing it. So, yeah. When I was about now 21 when I came home, and I've lost a lot of, lot of um, things about sandwich and songies. Uh, I I know uh, personally a lot of parents who uh, still to this day are are afraid to come into schools for meetings and um, you know for their kids because the, of their negative experience or because of their parents' negative experiences, and that legacy is still very much with us. I think it's um, uh, it's it's integral. It's it's key to um, to mend those relationships, um, and I think it's the responsibility of educators to reach out to the community and say, "Hey, look, we're here. Um, we want to do things differently." And I think it's um, also the responsibility of um, of the government to um, continue to work to make those uh, relationships whole again before we can see. Um, those uh, meaningful learning experiences um, uh, begin to happen. For me, when I was going through uh, high school, I made a, a transition from a small private school from about, uh, of about 300 people um, from K to 12 to a high school uh, with about 1,300 people just from 10 to 12. And so it was a, a, a really big transition for me to make, um, being, you know, kind of this, uh, this, I guess, big fish in a small pond to uh, this, you know, small fish in a big pond, I guess you could say. For me, definitely from 9 to 12. Coming into high school is a big step and is a big step for a lot of students because you don't really know what to ex like, expect. You come from a school where working all that other stuff is kind of like a push off. You don't have to really worry about grades or passing your courses. And then you come into high school and then it's a big step up. You have to worry about classes, courses, what you want to do with like your spare time, like uh, uh, athletic wise, basketball teams, soccer teams, whatever, anything like that. When I went to school, a lot of this, the structure was um, rote learning, so recall a fact. Um, it was more of a lecture style for teachers, and so now teachers are more of a facilitator. They're um, helping ones to um, be more interactive, um, working um, in a variety of different ways, again, to match their learning style. So if we can incorporate inquiry projects, as much as possible, we try and incorporate student interest. Grade nine, because you're like the smallest of the school and everybody's so, like I would say, older and like more confident. So you're just a kid going to high school. And yeah, like the first week of high school is really hard. Um, but I think one of the key things to my success, the key reasons for my success, um, in making that transition was having uh, a really amazing First Nations support teacher um, at the school I was at. And that was a new thing um, coming into uh, uh, high schools, was having Aboriginal support teachers for Aboriginal students. Um, also, we had uh, access to a First Nations room. It was one of the first years that it was uh, available. And it was um, uh, another, I think, key reason for our success. Grade nine because once you're coming out of middle school, you have this big fear because you're new to high school and there's like a lot of different people who are higher grade. I'd say around high school is when my self-esteem started affecting the most. Uh, before going to high school, um, we had uh, no electives available to us, so Basically, we just ta were taught the core courses and, you know, hymns and, and things were kind of one of those. 
So making that transition and being able to take things like law, um, First Nation Studies, uh, BC First Nation Studies 12, that was one of the first years that they had offered it. And um, that was a really amazing program uh, to be a part of. And one of the key differences from when I was in it to now is that there was no provincial exam at the end of it. And so the teacher didn't have to teach uh, to a specific curriculum. They had a lot more kind of artistic license over the course. For me, it was grade 12 because back home, grade nine, you're not the smallest. You're actually the oldest one in the school. High school is different, yeah. So for me, it was grade 12 because I was coming here and I had to do all of the tests at school and still do well at that and be prepared to like leave for the first time in my life and be away from my parents and my friends. And I wasn't sure I was ready for that. So I was always like trying to be focused and happy, but like I was so sad at the same time. Probably, probably in the high school times, more, more of it, because you get, you get kind of affected with, uh, or not affected, but kind of influenced with, with um, your self-esteem more when you're older. I feel so, probably through that, like the high school years. Yeah, I'd agree with Aiden, because like when you like after middle school, you get like all like, are all scared and like nervous and stuff to like go to high school, like you don't know what like what you're gonna be or something like that. You don't really have to do much in middle school. Is you're gonna pass, but in, once you get to high school, you have to oh, do these exams and stuff, and you have to try your hardest at these. Because if you don't, you're gonna fail, and that's when your self-esteem kicks in, and you're gonna want to try your best to pass because you want to get a better job and a better life. And I had, a, I was really fortunate to have an amazing uh, teacher who. Um, brought in a lot of guest speakers, a lot of elders, um, artists, community members, knowledge keepers, and um, and he was very passionate about um, social justice and about uh, you know just the atmosphere, the environment for Aboriginal students in the school. Um, he actually helped to uh, have the name of our uh, team uh, school teams change from the Belmont Bulldogs or Braves to the Belmont Bulldogs um, because he thought that that was. Um, you know, discriminatory. So uh, I really uh, admired his uh, tenacity. Uh, I would say try and find meaning in your education. Um, that was something that I searched for for a long time and when I found it, um, that was when it really started to click for me. Don't give up. Don't let your grades dictate um, how you feel about yourself. Um, definitely figure out the way that you learn because it's almost like a key, it's a, a light bulb for ones when they figure out that they um, can be successful. After, like I said, 21, when I was younger than that, like I was kind of wild and, you know, didn't care about life. But when I turned 21, I, uh, I found a lot of, you know, really good help to, you know, to, I, uh, I had to accept everything that was told to me to, you know, in order to really enjoy life. I think, um, you know, I can, I can speak for a number of uh, people here at the school that I say um, that I think really try and um, bring that meaning into the classroom. Um, and uh, for me, uh, I didn't always have that, and so I didn't always buy into education, um, you know, in high school especially. Uh, I, you know, just did enough to get by, even though I was capable of doing a lot better, and a lot of people told me that. Um, when they figure out what works for them, and, you know, it's... It's exciting to see that because there's lots of different ways to be successful and it's not about the grades but it's learning how to learn and persevering. What they always told me that like uh, after you leave school it's another schooling how to how to be a married person how to be a parent you know how to be a grandparent it's all a schooling and today I'm still learning about life.
I feel it's important to have positive role models in the community so that ones can um, you know, see they can do it. And it's just a matter of figuring out what works best for them. I've seen the old people from Sandwich, Duncan, Squimalt, Zombies. They were all that way. They weren't afraid to tell you how to be, to correct you in your life and help you along to get away from doing wrong things. And, and that's, where, that's what I know about the old people. You know, in high school especially, uh, I, you know, just did enough to get by, even though I was capable of doing a lot better. And a lot of people told me that. Um, but classes I didn't care about or teachers I didn't care for, um, I just, you know, did the bare minimum. 50% was, was just okay with me. Whereas today, a lot of the older ones that I see are afraid to, to really correct the young people, you know, to hurt them, to want to hurt them. But that's the way the old people were. They used to say, if it hurts you when they talk to you, it's a truth, you know, the truth that, that comes out, you know, what we have to learn, have to do in life, you know. That's what I learned about the old people. So finding meaning in what you're doing is, is a really important part of, of your educational journey and in life in general. Um, I would say take every opportunity at this, at this stage in your life to capitalize on, on those opportunities, to find the meaning in your classes, um, and to uh, make healthy choices. This is what, you know, I kind of learned about our culture, our Indian language, you know. It, it uh, brings, out, brings out a lot of meaning, the Indian language, that, that we don't, a lot of our Indian words are not in English, you know, not, not in English word. And it brings out a lot of meaning, strong, strong, powerful meaning to each other, you know, when you talk your language. The, I think young people today, and I think young people in general um, over the years, um, don't realize the, the gravity of their decisions at times, both positive and negative. But if you make um, the right moves at this stage in the game, um, you really set yourself up for, for either failure or success um, in a big way. So um, just simple things like getting to class on time, working hard, um, putting a little bit of yourself into what you do. Um, you're, you have the ability to really uh, take yourself to the next level. Later on in life, you know, when all my elders, my older brothers and sisters are all gone. I look around, where am I going to get help? Where am I going to have somebody tell me what to do? And I find out that it's all in here. You know, it's all in here. A minha mãe, meu pai, os meus amigos, a minha melhor amiga e Eles são muito importantes para mim e eu tô morrendo de saudade deles e eu não vejo a hora de ver eles de novo. Porque eu chorei muito no aeroporto. That's it. Todas as vezes que eu queria arrêter o avião e o piano. Mas... Mas tu continua a me suportar e... E... Eu queria te remercer por isso. Então... Merci papa, merci maman, merci mes amis, merci ma famille et merci l'école. I want to thank my mom for sure. She's always stood behind me and supported everything I've ever done. My friends, my teammates, my teachers, all the counselors and support that I've ever gotten. I want to thank you. I'd say my parents, mom and dad, my aunts, my uncles, my family down in San Diego. Teachers, your elementary, middle, and high. Friends. Riley, Alex, my mom, my dad, um, my brothers. A lot of teachers here. 
a lot of uh, support staff as well? Uh, for me, it's a lot on my parents, like a lot, and a lot of family members, uh, and teachers too. And I just want to give a shout out to the counselors of this school and to all my friends. Oh, and I'd like to give a shout out to all my fans whenever I go on a party. And a big shout out to all my bronies and Pegasus sisters out there. Lots of coaches, my family members, teachers here. Uh, let's say Kyle, <laughs> uh, my friend Gavin, Caitlin, Britt, uh, yeah, Phil Mack, yeah. Uh, my siblings, um, my wife, my children, um, my extended family, and uh, various educators over the years. I'm Aaron Apolinario, uh, grade 11, it's going well high. Uh, in my spare time, I usually just hang out with friends. Uh, or just go on Instagram, follow me, Aaron, underscore Apolinario14, follow me. And yeah, well, that's about it. <laughs> Aiden Nicholson, 17, Scrum High School. Can I do one more for safety? What? Everybody else had to do one. Just my chest bigger. Just my chest bigger. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Tell you, bloopers is about us. Okay. Yeah, what do you say? Yeah, what do you say? Yeah, your hair's good. Your hair's good too. Nice. We forgot to ask you guys a, a question on the last one. Up just a touch. Okay, um, Aiden, whenever you're ready, introduce yourself first. What do you like to do in your spare time? Play you, rugby. You collect shells, don't you? <laughs> shells. I love shells. Okay. We're going to be the yeah, whole we'll party. <laughs> no one else. It's all us. Would you like to tell, you, tell the audience uh, what day it is today? Uh, it is December 15th, I think. No, I like, yeah, it's December 15th. Okay. Thursday. Yeah. Thursday. Yeah, it's Thursday, December yeah, 15th. Yeah, I leave today after school. Yeah. Why? I got a tour. Tell me about it. No, I got a tour. I got a tour to, uh, through the States for Rugby Canada. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh. we're playing Utah, a Fijian team, and a Columbia team in the States. Casual. Yeah. Let the audience know it's pajama day. Or oh, it's pajama day. No, this is just us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is our school has taught me about self or taught. School has taught. Excuse me. Oh, you want to shout out? <laughs> oh, you want to shout out? Follow me on Instagram. Aaron <laughs> underscore Plano. Go show, go show me Instagram. Get your Instagram. Where's my phone at? I got this. <laughs> this is going to be bloopers. Yeah, yeah, this better be bloopers. Go show me Instagram. You guys, this, uh, this is like a shout out. <laughs> my shout out list. Your shout out. So, um, you can. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm so proud of you. You're so smart. Okay. Give it a second pose. Oh, I got a Snapchat. Oh. You, got a, you got a Snapchat. Go so oh, follow me on Snapchat. So too. Yeah. Aaron Plenario. Okay. Yeah, follow me on Snapchat too. What a guy. I'm famous one day. Just a walking blooper reel. That's yeah. all we are. You know, and this is this is how much. Jeremy Hooper, please report to the office for a message. Jeremy Hooper, to the office, please.